The catwalk, the photos, the lights, the camera, the action. Get on your prime and begin training today. Register at letstudio.com and become a Halo model. Hello El Paso, welcome to another segment of Local Icons and we have a guest all the way from New Mexico and she is a speech language pathologist, a professional, along with being a model, a New Mexico model. She's uh, gonna tell us a story and how she handles both her professional life and her modern life. So let's meet Miss Judith, come on out. Hi, Hi, Judith. How are you? Good. How Pleasure are you? meeting you. Thank you so much for having and me. And for being here. Have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you. I know you have a little bit of back problem, so we're, we bought a little pillow for you. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. All right. So, how are you? I'm doing well. How yeah. are you? Good. Thank you for being here. And we tried scheduling this once already, and your back was a problem, so yes. you couldn't really come through. I uh, hope you're doing better. Definitely, I'm feeling much better. All right, so we're gonna get straight into what we're here. This is a segment that's designed to motivate and inspire, and we found Judith online on Instagram, and she has beautiful photos, which you guys are gonna be able to see in just a little bit. We'll take a break, but let's begin with how was Judith, you know, where was she born, and how was she raised, and, and where are you from exactly? Give us a little bit of background. Well, I'm born and raised in Silver City, New Mexico. It's a very <laughs> small, New Mexico town, yeah. <laughs> like most New Mexico towns, yeah. right? Um, parents ended up there after a, their school bus they lived on broke down, and there's seven of us. <laughs> and they decided to stay there after it broke down. They decided to stay there, yeah. I did not, however. <laughs> you didn't, you're like, I'm out. <laughs> no, as soon as I graduated from high school, I was like, I need to get out of this little town. So there's only one high school in Silver City? Yes. Yeah? And it's called Silver City or it's High School? It's called, oh my goodness, I think, yeah, I think it's called Silver High. Silver, Silver High. High, okay. Yeah, the Fighting Colts. The Fighting Colts, mm -hmm. cool. And while you were in, in high school, uh, did you do sports? Did one of your siblings, did you have seven siblings or six? So there's six. Okay, six. so six, so yeah, seven total. I have a half sibling, okay. so, but they didn't live with us. Okay, and was, did any of, those siblings inspire you to kind of get into fitness world or sports or did you do any sports in high school? Um, I didn't do sports in high school. So I have a passion for running. I've okay. always loved running um, and I did track through middle school, but I come from very low poverty background. Mm -hmm. So I worked through high school. You I, yeah, I got to go to school and then work at Sonic, Sonic. Um, kind of, yeah, till one in the morning, those late shifts, and then I get up and go to school. And then get up day. and go to school. There's a lot of kids that, you know, have to go through that. Uh, yeah. But, you you know, it makes you grow faster. Uh, it teaches you a lot of uh, skills that, that, you know, other kids at that age don't kind of get the opportunity. Yeah, you'd be surprised the skills that I found I had entering the job market, yeah. especially in um, college that okay. other students just don't have. <laughs> yeah, which is one of the reasons why you're here, you know, coming from a low-income background, uh, Silver City, which is, it's, I don't know how many, what's the population there? Maybe like 10,000, 20,000? Oh, no. I, Smaller? I think it's like 3,000. 3,000? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> don't quote me okay. On that so number. coming from that it's sort small. of background, yeah, coming yeah. from that background to being a, having a master's, which we're going to get into right now, your college life, having a master's, a speech language pathologist, um, and then now kind of handling the modeling side and, and I love the pictures you sent me. You're gorgeous. You're beautiful. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, you're, you're, you know, you handle both sides. I think, you know, a um, almost like a hobby per se right now. Is modeling a hobby, or have you gotten paid already? I haven't gotten. I have no? not gotten paid okay. yet. <laughs> well, you might um, need to pretty soon because your pictures are amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that would be the goal. That would yeah. be hope to take it from being something that I enjoy and for fun, um, and actually. Making it, making it a part of career. Yeah. Yeah, even if it's part time. Why yeah, not? I think Absolutely. that'd be wonderful. So, what's the biggest, I think, challenge you know in your job and you know your daily? In my job, I would say, and I don't, I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm just so amazing, 
But honestly, it's, um, I never feel like I'm doing enough for oh, the kids, wow. you know? Well, what um, a good heart. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but really, that's what we're there for. We're there yeah. to improve on their learning and help them get through it and, and teach them in ways that they can actually succeed and be yeah. successful. And I'm a big advocate for my kids. I tell them, like, I don't want to do this for you. you. I want you to learn and have the skills so that you can be successful on your yeah. own because I just always tell them where I came from. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't believe in myself and look at where I got. And I hate when my students um, tell me that they're stupid because then I was working from kinder to sixth grade. Some of those sixth graders, especially if they've been in special education for years, they're just, you know, they have yeah. the stigma. Yeah, the stigma. And they the have a, they're a self-image yeah. problem. You know, they stigmatize themselves. Um, and so just trying to remind them that they're smart and they have skills. Yeah. And, you know what, when I was teaching, uh, we would always, we had, you know, faculty meetings, and whenever we would see certain symptoms or, or signs, it was our job to kind of ask for a assessment. Mm -hmm. And I, I, honestly, I never did it. i rather work on it myself, mm -hmm. because I didn't want them to have a label. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to think that they needed help. I tried to make sure that I did my job and inspiring, motivating them uh, consistently, you know, nurturing them was, was kind of like my, my fix. But um, and I commend you because that's a tough job, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a tough, a very tough job. I taught journalism, so a lot of kids took my class so they wouldn't take other electives that were boring. And uh, I did that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I had a lot of kids, you know, that, that were already getting those assessments. and. And getting labeled and I didn't like it you know but you know whoever has that job you know to, to get them to the next level because they fell behind that's that's a tough tough gig so I'm I can imagine what you know you go through and it's a very important job you yeah. know how many kids do you do you work with on a weekly monthly basis how does it go um, well you get a caseload and so it just depends on what school you're assigned to or, or if you're assigned to multiple schools. Do you go to a classroom or do you take them on a one-on-one? -on -one? Um, it depends on the student, right? Okay. So it's supposed to be individualized. So depending on what the child needs, wow. you'll either help them in the classroom um, with the teachers or one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one. or you'll pull them and work with them in a segregated setting. And it's only, you do kinder through six? Is that what you're doing? That's what I was doing. So okay. I'm actually now working mostly in the skilled nursing facility with adults. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So now you're working with adults. Uh-huh. I kind of did both last year, but this year now my focus is working in the skilled nursing facility. Well, good for you. Because of COVID. Oh, got you. Right. So things have kind of got shifted it. a little And you bit. think you'll go back to the school system? I would like to. I yeah. love the little guys. They bring joy to my life. Yeah. They just... Yeah, they do. All right. So let's take this break and... Uh, also, the opportunity to, take, to thank our sponsor, and let's see what Judith uh, has done with her modeling skills. some very cool pictures <laughs> wow all right so how did this modeling thing go for you because uh how did it start who got you in, into it 
I'm assuming that it was all fitness first, and then somebody said, I want to take some pictures of you. Yeah, right? that's kind of a, that's yeah. kind of what it was. So basically, I um, started getting ready for a fitness competition last year, and thought I want to step up my fitness game a notch, you know, and, yeah. and my body, and I just want to see where I can take it. Yeah. And um, was told by a bunch of friends, if you do a competition, you have to book a photo shoot. And yeah. I was like, why? Because you may never have this body ever again. <laughs> you have to book a photo shoot. Yeah. And I was like, okay, sure. Um, so I didn't actually book a photo shoot my first competition. Um, but I ended up doing two eight weeks apart. And the photographer who took all of the professional photos at the first show um, gave me his business card and was like, if you want to take photos before your next competition, um, you know, hit me up. Yeah. And so I basically was like, you know what, I should probably take advantage of this yeah. and take some photos. And I had tons of studio time with him. Can I say his name? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Throw him out, to plug him in. Awesome. He is Peter Gonzalez. He lives in Albuquerque. He's an amazing photographer. Cool. Makes you feel very comfortable, very professional. Um, so I did my first photo shoot with him and I just brought a bunch of different outfits and like a bikini, some fitness looking outfits yeah. and um, some leotards. And he, as we looked through the shots, he told me that he really thought that I could do something with this. And I totally agree. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody now that got to see a slideshow agrees with him because, <laughs> and what happened, there's a, there's some pictures in there of, I, I don't know if it's like uh, glass, it almost looks like glass, it's all. So that is a very special photo shoot I did, and it's actually with a so different photographer. Yeah. Um, I'll shout out, that is yeah. with Doug. I believe his last name's Muka. That's what it is on his Instagram okay. handle. So we'll, we'll find him and we'll put the tags for the photographers below. Yeah, and we actually worked with an artist named Jaime. Um, I don't know Jaime's last name, but again, he's on Instagram. He does what is called taping. That's what I've seen, so exactly. So I'm not wearing any clothing. Any clothing? It's all hand done taping. And the special thing about that is it's he does it all by hand and it's never recreated. It's, yeah, it's all. Every piece is individual for so that person. Cool. Um, and the fire in that photo shoot is real. Doug made all of like the set the that we set. were on. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, um, yeah, so what I'm holding is fire. Was that published? Because you said earlier that you were published. Or you told me between was, the break. Yeah, that one was not actually published. Okay. Although I think it's good enough to be published. It's well, pretty amazing. This is a big premiere for that photo shoot then. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to put it up again at the end of the uh, show so that you guys can see it one more time. Uh, but you can always go to uh, Judith's page, and we're going to plug it in right below so you guys can go follow her. Um, so which one is the one that got published? So it was actually 4th of July themed, and it's published in Fit Glam magazine. And so we're in 4th of July. Outfits. <laughs> outfits. Little outfits or? <laughs> Bikinis. Bikinis. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you get permission, let us know. We'll, we'll put it out there so that you can get some, uh, some yeah. uh, publicity and whatnot. Um, What's next? What's next for you? What's your ultimate goal? I mean, you just started about a year ago, you said? The fitness com uh, competitions. Mm -hmm. Modeling is kind of taking off just now for you. So what's your ultimate goal? Well, my ultimate goal is actually to start a fitness clothing line. And I have a name. <laughs> I don't know if I should share you wanna, it yet. You want to make the world premiere? <laughs> um, well, it's very far out. It's okay. very far out. Okay. Um, I have a name and I have an idea, a vision, and I've actually met with um, production uh, team because I want to produce my own clothing, actually handmade. Um, wow. And it's just a long, long process. Okay. It's what I'm finding. It's in the it's in the first baby steps right it's now. It's in the very first phase, but that's okay. kind of also. Oh gosh, that's what got me into wanting to take my body to the next level and wanting to do the modeling because Good. I thought I can promote my business through myself. It's the way to do it. And also, I mean, you're working on yourself at the same time. It's amazing. Yeah, so absolutely. Why, why not? not? Why not? Um, and just before we sign off, I want you to plug in your fiance is opening up a gym. Yes. And hopefully soon we're going to be able to visit. What's the name of this gym? His name is Bionic. Barbell. 
Carbell, and it's located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Okay, what's the address? Ooh, 700 Stern Drive, I believe that's okay. the address. <laughs> we'll make sure that's correct before we put it on there for you guys. Um, Bionic Barbell? Bionic Barbell. Cool, that sounds interesting. What is, what's the whole concept behind it? Because you said it has a, it has a very own genuine twist to it. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, he can go into it a lot better than I can, but he is hand selecting every piece of equipment that comes in. You know, oftentimes you go into a gym and it looks like they have all pre-core or mm. all hoist. You know, all of the equipment is from the same company. Okay. Um, not in his gym. He has pieces of equipment in there that you will not find in any other gym. So it's not like a CrossFit gym, right? It's not a CrossFit gym on um, performance training, strength and performance. Athletics. Athletics. Uh -huh. But he wants it to be a gym that anyone can go to. People oh. who are just starting out, who have never stepped foot in the gym, um, to people who have been going to the gym for years. And that's why him <laughs> hand picking the equipment is so important. Yeah. Because he's finding pieces of equipment that fit for people who are me, who are short, <laughs> petite, I like how to old, say. How tall are you? I'm not tall. <laughs> <laughs> she's That's around 5'8", like, guys. So she's I'm just kidding. I'm 5'1". <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and I often have a hard time fitting on equipment. And so he is actually going out of his way to find pieces of equipment that anyone can work out on. Wow, Any good size. You. Um, you know, that's just a few things, but. So look out for Bionic Barbell. We'll be out there very soon. Uh, I had told uh, Judith here that uh, we're going to go visit you guys as soon as you guys are ready. Uh -huh. So it's almost there, yeah, right? It's almost there? Almost, almost there. there. Almost okay. there. We're hoping for a grand opening January. Cool. All right. So a couple of months we'll be there. Judith, thank you so much for being here with us. So okay. It's been a pleasure. Um, your story is very inspirational. And uh, I want everybody to, to learn from that. Uh, especially females. You know, females uh, can multitask both fitness and a professional life like yourself. If I could say one last thing. Absolutely. Um, just stick with it, whatever you choose to do. I mean, you're gonna have hurdles, you're gonna have things in your way, you're gonna have people telling you that they, you aren't gonna be successful and you can't do it. Um, but just stick with it. Yeah. You gotta believe in yourself. Absolutely, so there it is. The message from Judith, well said. And I'm sure uh, people will enjoy watching this segment and learning a little bit from Judith. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, Judith, thank you very much. Keep up thank the good you. work. We'll follow up with you very soon awesome. to see how the gym is doing and, and maybe any other work. Uh, so before we sign off, uh, or as we sign off, we want you guys to enjoy a little bit more pictures of Judith and uh, some of her work. You guys have a blessed day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>